Okay, in today's video, I'm going to be going over an explanation of the Bohr model and emission spectra. In subsequent videos, I'll go over some calculations for emission wavelength, absorption wavelength, uh, ionization energy, and things like that. You can link to those videos in the upper right-hand corner of this video. Before we go on, please don't forget in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a subscribe button. Click on the subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos and here we go the Bohr model that is right that is Niels Heinrich David Bohr he came up with the Bohr model and for the Bohr model he for coming up with the Bohr model to explain absorption and emission of energy in atoms he won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1922 for his services in the investigation of the structure of atoms and the radiation emanating from them. And he proposed a theory for the hydrogen atom based on the quantum theory that energy is transferred only in certain well-defined quantities. An electron should move around the nucleus, but only in prescribed orbits, not all over the place. And when they jump from one orbit, the electron, to another orbit with a lower energy level, they can emit a quantum of light which we call a photon of light. Okay, and when we draw the Bohr model, we draw it usually looking something like this. We could say there's a hydrogen atom with a nucleus, one proton, one electron. And that electron would be in the ground state, which we call N1, quantum number one, and principle quantum number one. And then there's the excited states N2 and N3 and N4 and N5 and on, so on and so on. This is the ground state and these are the excited states. And if a photon of light or energy was to come by that atom and that atom could absorb that energy, that electron could absorb that energy and that energy matched exactly the energy level difference from N1 to N2 or N2, N1 to N3 or so on and so on, then that electron could move to a higher energy level. So let's just say we have a photon of light. There's a photon of light strikes that atom, that electron. That photon of light has the exact energy, that is the energy level difference between N1 and N2, the ground state and the first excited state, then that electron, that atom could absorb that energy, move up to the next highest energy level, but it doesn't want to stay there. When it moves back down to the ground state, it will emit that energy as light, as a quantum, as a photon of light. Also, if we had another photon that has a little bit higher energy, green, higher than red light, if that light matched exactly the difference between N2 and N3, or excuse me, N1 and N3, then it could also absorb that light and move up to the second excited state, move back down, and then emit that energy as a photon of light once again. And for that, we get the spectrum of light from hydrogen. The hydrogen spectrum looks like that. Each line on the hydrogen spectrum or each line on any spectrum corresponds to an electron transition from a higher energy level to a lower energy level. This is red light, generally low energy, so this could be, for example, from N2 to N1. It's actually not N2 to N1, but it could be lower. And then more energy would be from a higher energy level back down to a lower energy level. Okay, we'll talk about the specifics of a hydrogen spectrum in just a moment. Okay, now this is what we how we now kind of draw a little bit more advanced energy level diagram for hydrogen. The energy levels are designated in electron volts. This is just another form of energy, like joules, if you're more familiar with joules, but it's just another unit for energy. The ground state in hydrogen atom is designated as minus 13.6 electron volt. Basically, what that means is if we wanted to ionize that electron and give it no energy relative to that atom, we would have to add 13.6 electron volts. It would have to be a photon of 13.6 electron volts. Generally, when we draw the energy level diagram, we don't draw the electron on there, but just to show an analog analogous situation from the previous slide, we have the electron at the ground state. If a photon of light was to come by that matched the exact transition from N1 to N2, which would be 10.2. The difference in these two is 10.2 electron volts. From N1 to N3 is 12.09. Then that electron, that atom could absorb that photon of energy, move up to a higher energy level, 
And then when it moves back down to a lower energy, back down from the excited state, back down to a ground state, it would emit that energy as a photon of light. Now, like I said, we usually don't draw the electron on there, but we draw these arrows. Those arrows designate the transitions from a higher energy level to a lower energy level. Okay, and the, these transitions, which come from a higher energy level back down to the ground state, are designated as the Lyman series. They're in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum because they kind of have a lot of energy, which means high energy and short wavelength, which is not visible to the human eye, to the naked eye. At the other end, we have what we call the Pashin series. Pashin is when we go from a higher energy level back down to an intermediate excited state, which is N3, before coming back down to the ground state. Those have low energy. There's a low difference in energy between these transitions, and therefore they have low energy, long wavelength. That's in the infrared general. We cannot see those also. But, of course, right in the middle, in the sweet spot, we have the Balmer series, which is the visible part of the spectrum, and that is when electrons transition from a higher energy level back down to N2 before coming down to the ground state. And that is what we see in the hydrogen spectrum when you look through a spectroscope and you see those transitions, you see those lines. The red line corresponds to the transfer from the transition from N3 to N2. This blue line is the transition from N4 to N2. This line is a transition from 5 to 2, and this one's a transition from 6 to 2, and then we move off into the ultraviolet portion of the spectrum. Now, we can actually calculate the wavelength, frequency, energy of the light that is emitted from each of these transitions, which is what we're going to do now. We're going to go through one example. It'll be a common question that you could get is, what is the wavelength of this light when it goes from transition from 3 to 2? Or what is the wavelength of this light when it goes from transition from 4 to 2? And we're first going to calculate the difference in the electron volts. Let's just say for this line right here, when we go from 5 to 2, the difference between 3.4 and 0 0.54, I believe, is 2.86 electron volts. And if we wanted to do that for this transition right here, we could take the difference, which is 3.4 and 1.51. The difference between those is 1.89 electron volts. And now on the next slide, we're going to take this transition, 5 to 2, and we're going to figure out first the joules, then the frequency, and then the wavelength in meters and nanometers. So let's do that on the next slide. Okay, so we had when we go from a transition from uh, N5 to N2, the difference in energy in electron volts is 2.86 electron volts. When we use the subsequent equations, which we'll do in just a moment, we want to use those. The energy has to be in joules. So first, we're going to convert electron volts to joules. We know that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So it's just a conversion to a different energy unit, which is 4.58 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. This number of electron volts corresponds to this number of joules, energy, energy. Now, we're going to use this equation, which says that the energy in joules is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. We want to first determine the frequency. So I'm now going to rearrange this equation. The frequency is equal to the energy divided by Planck's constant. The energy for this equation has to be in joules. It cannot be in electron volts. And therefore, we get 4.58 times 10 to the minus 19 joules divided by 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules second. This is Planck's constant. And that gives us a frequency of 6.90 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now we can use this equation that the speed of light C is equal to the frequency times lambda, which is the symbol for the wavelength. We're going to calculate now the wavelength. We're going to rearrange this equation to get the wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. Here we have the frequency, which is the speed of light is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, divided by 6.90 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And that gives us a wavelength of 4.34 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. And emphasizing minus 7 meters, 
because that comes out in meters. We want to convert to nanometers, and I have here 4.34 times 10 to the seventh. It should be minus seven. This should be minus seven meters. And then we're going to convert to nanometers. One nanometer or one meter has a billion nanometers in it. So we're going to convert. We're going to say that one meter is equal to one times 10 to the ninth. That's billion nanometers. Our meters cancel, and we get that. That light when in, in a hydrogen atom, when we have an electron transition from the N5 back down, not to the ground state, but to the first excited state, which is N2, so that's N5 to N2, the wavelength of light that would be emitted would be 434 nanometers, which corresponds to this number of meters, which corresponds to this frequency, which corresponds to this number of joules, which corresponds to this number of electron volts. So there you go. That's an explanation of the Bohr model, Niels Bohr, electron transitions, quantum mechanics, photons of light, and the wavelength emitted. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Thumbs up. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.